Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of making self-care a priority. With the hustle and bustle of life, it's so easy to go through our days so busy that we forget to take care of our most important asset, ourselves. Taking time to rest and restore our minds and bodies is vital to optimize our productivity. Successful people work hard, but they also make sure to focus on activities like working out, reading, spending time with family, resting, and doing activities that make them happy. Being able to have a work-life balance is difficult sometimes, but your happiness is important too. Working too much without taking care of ourselves leads to unhappiness and poor health because we aren't taking time to focus on our happiness and mental health. Remember, there will always be something to do. Make your mission today to make some time daily to, to do an activity that makes you happy. You will notice by doing this, you will be more refreshed and productive. As Stephen Covey quotes in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he refers to the term sharpening the saw, which means taking time for self-care. He quotes, sharpening the saw means preserving and enhancing the greatest asset you have, you. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. Obviously, the question of the day is that you have 5.9 million followers on TikTok. So how did you build that? And did it take a long time? Yeah, well, so I started earlier this year. So I started actually about a year ago in January of, uh, or this year actually. And so it's been pretty quick going from zero to 5.9 million. And I think that I always knew that I was super passionate and wanted to make it a profession in terms of my acting and makeup and fashion and all the things that I do. But I never would have guessed that I would have received the love that I got on the app. And I could not be more grateful every single day to be able to have the coolest job ever, which is just to share my art. Next up on the show, we have TikTok star Emma Norton with over 5.9 million followers. She is known for her choreographed dances and skits using special effects makeup on TikTok, which have earned her over 100 million likes. Emma, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? You're doing so well. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I, as I was telling you earlier, I love your hair and makeup. You look incredible. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So let's talk about how did you discover special effects makeup and just makeup in general? Yeah, um, well, I discovered it through my first love, which was musical theater. And oh. doing their makeup for the shows and for everything. And I always saw people do it and I was like, I wonder if I could do that, but maybe do it my own way. And so I just got into it more and more with each Halloween passing and TikTok gave me a place to actually practice it actively every day. So it, that's how I got into it. Yeah, and you have some really cool looks, especially with your special effects. Some of your looks are really cool and intense, like your Halloween looks. So how do you plan those? Do you do you kind of practice or how did you kind of develop your skill? Yeah, um, you know, I wish I had time to practice. Honestly, <laughs> it's so time consuming just doing the look itself that if I practiced, it would take another five hours. Um, but sometimes I draw them and oftentimes wow. I get from paintings or characters that already are pre-existing or kind of just what comes to me. Oftentimes I just freehand it. Oh. Yeah, and you also talked about musical theater, which is really interesting. So let's, let's talk about that. I would love to, yeah. No, I think that with, um, with musical theater, the reason why I fell in love with that was just because, and that's why I love film acting so much now is because of musical theater. And it was, I think the reason why I loved it so much was because of the vulnerability of actors on stage. I think that that's such a powerful part of acting, whether it be involved with theater or film. And um, I hope to do more of that in the future. Mm -hmm. And I love that, that you're using your passion with makeup and then also musical theater, because you know, you're very animated in your videos, so you're kind of using both talents. Obviously, the question of the day is that you have 5.9 million followers on TikTok. So how did you build that? And did it take a long time? Yeah, well, so I started earlier this year. So I started actually about a year ago in January of, uh, or this year actually. And so it's been pretty quick going from zero to 5.9 million. And I think that I always knew that I was super passionate and wanted to make it a profession in terms of my acting and makeup and fashion and all the things that I do. But 
I never would have guessed that I would have received the love that I got on the app and I could not be more grateful every single day to be able to have the coolest job ever, which is just to share my art with people. Right? I, that's the that's the best thing about social media is that, you know, you can share your passions, you can make it a career. And speaking of that, I want to talk about, you know, how does someone build a successful social media channel, whether that be TikTok, Instagram, YouTube? How do they do that? And, and what are some of the pros and cons in, you know, making that a career? Yeah, um, well, you know, I think that it has to start with the reason why you're doing it. Um, I think that if you're doing social media for other people's approval and for, you know, the admiration of other people, then you can't do it because to be honest, you never know what the feedback is that you're going to get. And so I think that it's to start with you and lead with yourself and what makes you unique. And I know that that's what I did and I didn't expect that to work because I was originally thinking like, oh, I just want people to like me, oh, I just want this, but it taught me that you should just stick to what makes you you. And on top of that, I think that it's it's so important to, in terms of TikTok and with anything, watch what's working too. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is an analytical thing, social media, and to watch what's working and then make it your own, that's how I got my success, I think, is from seeing trends that were already going and changing mm -hmm. it to be more like myself. Yeah, absolutely. And what kind of work does it take behind the scenes? Because obviously people always see the success on social media and, you know, they just see that part, but they don't see what goes behind the scenes and the planning and that kind of stuff. So what kind of work does it take behind the scenes to create a channel that's, you know, successful? It takes a lot. Unfortunately, mm. I can't say <laughs> that I just do like easy content maybe like uh, dances every blue moon as much as I uh, love watching that content too that is not what my content is and so unfortunately and it's actually it's a really positive thing that I, I spend so much time on it because I love it um, mm -hmm. but it is a hassle I for sure um, I think that I probably spend most days gathering videos that I like and how I can change it to myself um, I'm constantly watching on the news, I'm watching, you know, current events and how I can incorporate that in my content. It's honestly a full-time job um, because sometimes my makeup looks can take up to seven hours. Wow. Um, take all day. Uh, it's yeah. the whole process and editing, don't even get me started. Yeah, no, I know all about that. I also do some social media influencing on Instagram and these things, and it takes like 100 pictures to get one good picture, and it's a lot of work to also find brand deals and all of that stuff. People don't really see, they, they just know the, the success part, but they don't see what like, goes behind the scenes. So I'm so glad that you, you share that. I know you're also an actress. So let's talk about some of the movies that you've been in. So I've actually only been in a couple short films as of now and yeah. I think that I've had really good experiences with those just short films um, and although they aren't anything crazy like a Netflix special that's something that I'm totally working towards in the future or something like that um, and I think that with the auditions that I've been doing, there's been a lot of positive traction and it's hard with Corona because oftentimes sets are closed, but I am definitely working my butt off to be able to uh, advance myself in that position as an actress and as an artist. And so not much yet, but I hope that there's a lot more to come. Yeah, and are you looking more to get into theater acting or more like full-time movies and that kind of stuff? Definitely more movies and film. Um, yeah. As much as I love theater, I think that that's a little bit of a different realm, and I've definitely dabbled in that realm. And not saying I wouldn't love to do that sometime in the future, but film and TV is definitely where I want to go. Nice. I also love that you're using your platform to inspire people and for good. I did see that you're involved in two charities, uh, Brought to Reality and recently with Charity Water. So let's talk about each of these charities and what they are. Yeah, so Brought to Reality is a company that was uh, started by a teenager in Colorado and he wanted basically all teenagers to feel like they are not alone in their mental health journey because I know being a young person myself and it doesn't matter what age you are that we all go through our own struggles and to know that you're not alone and you are supported and 
the profits of this brand, which they have created different sets of hoodies and products that people can buy. And the proceeds of that, some of them go to uh, giving help to those who need it with their mental health and whether that be in counseling or therapy or whatever it is, um, which is something that I'm so grateful exists um, because we all need a little help sometimes, like I said. Um, and mm. then in terms of Charity Water, I also am working with them and just started working with them. Um, and it's such an incredible charity because they they help provide clean water to millions of people around the world, which sounds like such a basic thing, but it's a basic human necessity that mm. so many people have access to. And they are really making a difference in the education of those and the economy of those around the world because instead of going to school or to work, they're going to get clean water. And uh, yeah, I'm very passionate about both. Yeah, and I, I love that you're giving back and you're using your platform to do good. And especially right now, with, you know the holidays are just around the corner. I think that's really important. So how would you encourage our viewers to you know, give back? Because I think the holidays are about giving, not about just receiving. It's not just about gifts and receiving. It's also about giving back to the community. So what would you say to encourage our viewers to do so? Yeah, absolutely. I, I could not agree more. Um, you know, I think that there's so many ways to get involved this holiday season and no matter what season it is, there's so many ways to get involved. But I know that there's, if you're looking for something local, you could look for a local soup kitchen, something as simple as that, and getting involved in, you know, a homeless shelter or in some place in your community, if that's important to you, getting involved with that is so incredibly helpful and could mean a lot to someone who doesn't have a lot. Um, and you know, I think that there's so many other ways to like in my Instagram bio, I even provide and talk about this every time I go live about the issues that are going on in the world and where you can donate and what resonates most with you. I know that everyone is different and wants to help with different places, but my one note is please do your research based off of any charity that you do because you don't know how much they're actually donating yeah. to yo or to their you know actual organization and, and so I, I just think there's so many ways that it's fun to get creative with it yeah that, that's very true so let's talk about what's been the, one of the biggest milestones in your career so far oh you know that's so hard i think that there were so many important ones for me um you know i think that as soon as i hit a million that was like I, I don't have to say I have a hundred thousand. I don't know what it is, but something with that number, I was just like, wow, this is real. Like this is happening. Um, I think that that was a really big deal for me. And I think that also being, you know, interviewed by you, you guys, I think that that's such a big deal for me as well. And, and also I've done so many magazine shoots as of recently, and that's been unreal. I never would have dreamt of that. Um, and I just hit 300,000 on Instagram nice, as well. Nice. Congratulations. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. And um, I got my uh, my kind of year in review back and I received 1.4 billion views across wow. the board, mm -hmm. which is something I don't think I'll ever be able to comprehend. And I could not be more grateful for that. Yeah. That's great. I like that you said grateful because it's funny right now I'm reading a book on the law of attraction and it says, you know, if you're cool. grateful for anything, it multiplies. So I think that's probably yeah. one of the keys to your success is being grateful. Um, you know, what do you think that leads to my next question? What do you think the key to your success has been? Because I find you very grounded and very mature and just authentic, which is was really nice to see. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, no, I, I really do. So what do you think the key to your success has been? Because I know you're very young as well. Yeah, I, I am 17. I am. Yeah, young. wow, 17. <laughs> yeah, I'm 17, so I'm, I'm young. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel that way with everything going on. But I do think that gratitude, like you were saying, is so pivotal in anyone's success. And that I think that I've just always known my entire life that we all put our pants on one leg at a time. And no matter how big your numbers are, no matter who you are, where you're from, that you're no better than anyone else. And I think that that has helped me create so many relationships with creators. And I've always stayed so authentic in myself, mm -hmm. even when 
I got so much backlash for just being myself. And mm. I don't think I would be where I am today with my success if I didn't stick to who I was despite the backlash. And so I think that that's where my success came from was from very long hours, from gratitude, and from sticking to what makes me me, even if not everyone likes it. Yeah, that's the way you get to do it. Just to, you know, stick to your vision, be authentic, and, you know, as you, as we both said, be grateful. Um, you know, what's the best advice someone ever gave you? And the last question I want to ask you after that is also, um, you know, what advice do you have for someone also getting into or wanting to get into social media and kind of do what you do? Um, you know, I think that the best advice that I ever got, that's hard because I have a lot of really wonderful people in my life giving me advice. I think that the best advice that I received is similar to what I said helped with my success was that, you know, if someone doesn't like what you're doing and, you know, if someone's so worried about what you're doing and how you can change it and how you can change yourself, don't be so worried about what they think, be worried about yourself and how you can improve yourself um, as a person. Because at the end of the day, I think that you are only limiting yourself based off of other people's opinion of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's so important to break free from that because I know I have, I wouldn't have a fraction of what I have today if I cared about what other people thought about me. Yeah. Um, so I think self-love and hard work is so important. The, the best Revenge is success, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that if I were to give advice to anyone else starting on social media, it would be that same advice. Um, because I've seen so many beautiful creators get caught up in mm -hmm. the opinion of other people, of millions of people who will say anything however they want to say it, no matter how cruel or how nice it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's about, I think, loving yourself enough and, you know, caring about who you are as a human being enough so that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice. And thank you, Emma, so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. You really deserve it. You're really a very kind and inspirational person. And I want to say also, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance and come back on the show anytime. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a blast being here and I appreciate your time and everything. Oh, thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.